Okay, so let's go ahead and walk through some examples of constructing basic queries. So let's imagine that we have census tract data and we have the attribute population 2020, which would contain the population of that census tract in 2020. And we're tasked with finding all the census tracts with a population of at least 100 people. So just to recap, right, the structure of every attribute that we're going to write starts with var name, right, the variable name that we want to compare for the data set, some sort of comparison that we've talked about, and then some value to make the comparison against, right? So these are the three pieces that we're going to have for every single query that we ever write. So let's go ahead and look at our example here and figure out which pieces go where. So the first thing we need to do is find the variable name. Right, in, this, in this case, right, we want to find all the census tracts with a population of at least 1,000, and we know that the attribute in the data set is POP2020. So this POP2020, right, this is going to be our var name. So we're going to have POP2020. POP 2020, right? The next piece is the comparison, right? What type of mathematical operation are we going to be making to compare the value to the variable name? Well, we know down here, right, just as a shorthand to keep track of stuff, these are the basic options that we have. So let's go ahead and see what we're trying to do, right? We're trying to find all the census tracts with a population of at least 1,000 people, right? This at least right here. <clears throat> right, this is going to be an indication of the type of comparison that we want to make, right, at least. So we know what comparison we're making, but how do we express that in our sort of query up here? Well, remember when we said at least is typically whenever you see at least, that's going to be greater than or equal to, right? So our mathematical comparison here is going to be greater than or equal to. And then finally, right, we have to grab the value. What is the value that we're going to make this comparison of POP2020 against? <clears throat> well, our value, right, we're going to try to find the population of at least 1,000 people. Right, this 1,000 here, right, this is going to be our value. Right, so if we were to write that out sort of not in pieces like that, Right, our finalized query is going to be pop 2020 greater than or equal to 1,000. All right. <clears throat> okay, so let's go ahead and look at another example. All right, so we have counties in this case with the attribute ST, which stands for the state name the county belongs to. And we want to find all counties that are part of Florida. So let's break that down again, right? What is our variable name that we're interested in? Well, the only attribute that we have in this case, right, is ST. So we would do ST, right? We want to find all the counties that are part of Florida. So what we're looking for is we're looking for the state name, is equal to, right, because that's, right, sort of inferred from are a part of, we're inferring that we want the state name to equal. What do we want it to equal? We want it to equal, right, Florida, right? So again, breaking all those parts down, we have ST equals Florida. Right, this would go through the data set and it would pull out all of the counties whose state name is Florida. Let's look at one more example of a basic query. So oops, this should actually be example three. Right. You have a county's data set with the attribute ST. We've already looked at this. This is the exact same data set. But instead of finding the counties that are part of Florida, we want to find the counties that are not part of Michigan. So the first part is the same, right? We have ST. 
coming from here, right? This is the variable name that we're interested in. We have our value. It's going to be Michigan. Right, but we want to get all of the states that are not part. So we're going to say, hey, for each county, is your name not Michigan? Right, and the sort of comparison operator that we have for not is this equal sign with a slash through it. Right, this is going to say, if your state name is not equal to Michigan, select you. Otherwise, if your state name is Michigan, we can get rid of you. Right, so to write that out, right, ST not equal to Michigan. Okay. So that is how we set up basic queries. So let's go ahead and take a second and go through some review questions. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you with a question pause the video, try and work through it on your own, and then we'll come back and we'll go through it together. So let's look at the first question. You were given a point data set of recently inspected fire hydrants. The fire marshal needs to know how many of the hydrants have a sustained pressure of less than 15 PSI so they can be examined, repaired, and replaced. So the idea here is that we want to write a query that is going to return the hydrants that have less than 15 PSI using the attribute suspress. So go ahead, pause the video, try to write a query that will answer this, and then we'll come back together and work through the answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through the answer together. Well, we know that we need to start off with our variable name, and we were given that the variable name is suspress, so we know that we're going to have suspress. Right, for the comparison, right, we know that we need to have a pressure of less than, so this is going to be the less than operator. And because it is not at, at most, we know that it is, we're not going to have the equals part. We're strictly, we are strictly using, right, we're strictly using less than, we're strictly using less than here. Less than 15 PSI. Right, that's this piece right here. 15 PSI. So suspress less than 15. Hopefully you got that one right. Let's go ahead and look at another review question. So the NIH just published a county level data set of COVID-19 hospitalization rates. Your GIS class is trying to investigate the relationship between high hospitalization rates and comorbidities. The first step is to isolate counties with high hospitalization rates of at least 25%. Write a query to accomplish this. The attribute for hospitalization rates is HOSP rate. So go ahead, pause the video, try and write up this query, and then we'll go through it together. Okay, hopefully you were able to figure it out, but let's go through it together. So again, we always start with identifying the variable of interest here. In this case, right, again, we're sort of given it as hospirate. So we're going to have hospirate. Right, our comparison, we have the at least here. And again, whenever you see at least, that is an indication that you have a greater than or equal to. Right, because again, Whenever we use English, whenever we talk about greater than or equal to, we usually use the term at least. So this is greater than or equal to, and then our value is going to be, right, this 25%. Right, so HOSP rate, greater than or equal to, 25. Let's do one last review question. <clears throat> 